Hey, how's it going? This is Joshua with I Cut Grass, and it's uh, January the 28th, um, or maybe it's the 29th, I don't know, it's Friday, um, and it's about 9.30 in the morning, and uh, I wanted to get on here briefly to create a, a short video for some of you guys uh, that um, are new to the industry or considering starting a business, as that's the purpose of all my videos. Sometimes some of you more seasoned guys might benefit from hearing some of this too, or it might strengthen you. And what you do, what I always tell people is what I share with people is just something to get you to think. You might have a hundred different reasons why you're not going to do it the way that I mentioned might be beneficial. And that's great. When you have your own business, you can do what you want to do. Um, so today what I want to do is, 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 is talk to you briefly about bi-weekly mowing. Now, ultimately, I'm not a fan of it. Um, there are times in the summer where I cut my grass every two or three weeks, but that's because the growth has stunted and I want my grass to stay green. But from a business perspective, um, things are different, okay? I ask my customers that want weekly service to make a commitment to me from the start of the season, which is usually sometime in April, sometimes in March, though not often, um, all the way up until Thanksgiving Thursday. That means I'm equipped, I'm staffed, I'm insured to mow your lawn, I'm turning down other business in lieu of the commitment to you for that specific spot. So that's a weekly bill. And I tell my customers, it's a weekly bill. Just like cable, if you don't watch the you know the cable, you don't use your internet, you still have to pay the bill because it's available for you. So all that's discussed up front. The difference with bi-weekly mowing is I tell my customers, it's bi-weekly mowing. That means I'm going to be committed to you every two weeks, no matter what, until the end of the season. If you can't commit that to me, I can't help you. And another thing about bi-weekly mowing is I won't take anything less than payment at every time of, of service. They can pay me for a month in advance if they want to. But the first time I mow that lawn and they don't have their payment out there, I'm done. And that's a whole other conversation in and of itself. And you can decide what you want to do with payments. But I've been burnt many times. I've tried all kinds of things. The best scenario for me moving forward is um, with all customers, um, have, is and has been for quite some time, many years now, payment at time of service. I have a small amount of customers that I invoice. And each year it gets a little bit smaller because sometimes they move or they die or whatever. But I don't want to finance people's work. So, let's talk about what I want to share with you today. I created a mock schedule here for the month. You probably can't read it really well. I've had these uh, whiteboards in my office now for several years, and I'm toying around with this camera setup. I don't like what I have right now. I'm going to get something different. So, if you can't see it, I apologize. But this is basically a month schedule for one lawn each day of the week. And then that schedule would repeat. So each X indicates one lawn for that day. And it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay? Now my average lawn is $40, okay? So for this particular example, I'm at $40. So if I mow one customer every day for a week, I know I'm going to make over here $280 for that week. And then the next week, that schedule repeats itself. Now I'm not limiting myself to one customer a day. I'm just using this as an example because technically I can do this times two. I can do the entire week times two in one day, depending on what kind of windshield time I've got from property A to B and what kind of square footage we're talking about, what type of mowing I'm doing. But to keep it simple, that's $280 a week, which comes out to $1,120 on the month for a, a schedule that has uh, weekly mowing for the customers. By way of comparison, if I do bi-weekly, that same lawn, I would then charge $65, for example, or whatever you want to charge, um, for bi-weekly mowing, okay? And uh, so instead of uh, $40, I'm at $65. If I have one bi-weekly calendar schedule every day, that's $455, okay, for that uh, week's work. $455 compared to $280, for one lawn. Now I'm going to follow me on this. For that for that schedule, the next week I don't cut those customers property, but the next week I do. So there's another 455. So that puts me off of that schedule, okay, for the same customers for the month, $910 versus over here, $1,120 for the same customers each week, okay? Based on one customer a day. If I decide to fill in that other week with another customer for each day, that's another $455 each week, which comes out to $1,820 for the month versus $1,120. A difference of $700, and my increase is only $15, or was it 
So it saves them $15 every two weeks. I got to move this kind of this alarm off of here. I get a lot of customers that want this. I don't like bi-weekly mowing. I've said it before in my videos. There are some cases though where it could be beneficial. If you don't have enough weekly customers, why not? It's better than nothing. Um, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed and overworked, maybe you run a bi-weekly schedule and you take a week off in between. You, you got to decide for you. But I want to talk with you briefly about some of the things, obviously not everything, but some of the things to consider with bi-weekly mowing. Sharp blades. It's important to have uh, sharp blades when you cut the grass. Theoretically, you should be sharpening those blades no less than every eight hours. Most of you guys aren't doing that. And then your lawns are getting diseases and you don't understand why. And the reality is you're not putting a clean cut on it. You're putting a jagged rip. And we can go, that's a whole other story itself. But sharpen your blades no less than every eight hours. And here's why. There's more moisture in the lawn when you've got um, uh, lawns that are taller. The taller they get, the more moisture they hold at the base of the grass plant. And the sun doesn't get to it, doesn't dry it out. So you're going to have clumpy grass. You know, when you get done mowing and you're getting ready to drive or walk your mower up onto the trailer, you turn the blades off and all that grass falls down to the ground. So you got to get under, you got to scrape off. And you already, at least where I'm at, have to do this several times every day with weekly mowing. So bi-weekly mowing is going to be even more of a bit of a pain, so to speak, to deal with. So you're going to have to deal with that. The belts and the spindles um, on your equipment, your equipment in general, are going to take a more of a beating, okay? The life of your mower might not be as long, but let's be realistic. Some of you guys are out there mowing grass that's a foot tall. You have no business taking your Dixie chopper or, you know, your skag or you know, your spark mower, your hustler, whatever you have. You have no business going out there cutting that grass that tall, but some of you do it anyway. And that's your business. You can do what you want. So oftentimes people say, I can't do bi-weekly mowing for that. And then I see them out there cutting basically hay. You know, it's like, come on, dude. Let's be realistic here. You can do it. It's not ideal. And maybe you limit your older equipment to the bi-weekly um, service uh, schedule. But something to consider, okay? Um, you're going to spend a little more money in gas because it's going to take you more time. Here's the thing. In some cases, you might need to go over the lawn twice, particularly in the early to mid-spring. Not always. If you're keeping your blades sharp and you're not speeding through the lawn, you can often just cut it one time. Um, I have a tendency to mow it twice because usually the second time it takes me a fraction of the amount of time the first time, but I'm still coming out ahead compared, outside of the fact that I've got more wear and tear on my lawn, I'm still coming out ahead and making a little more money than I'm making over here, okay? But I've always favored the weekly mowing customers because they're more of an integral part of my business. They're the um, uh, meat and potatoes, so to speak, versus the, what I call candy customers. But I'll tell you, this is becoming more and more appealing to me from a business model for many reasons. Um, uh, you're going to have a lopsided schedule with bi-weekly mowing initially until you can fill it in. That's something to consider. Um, and then also a mess in the lawn. You know, it's going to, like I said a minute ago, is, which is why you got to keep the blade sharp. Um, you're going to have more clumpy grass. Maybe in some cases you have to bag it. Now, if you, this doesn't include bagging. I'm going to charge even more money for bagging. And I'm not hauling the grass away. I'm not a trash service. I might provide bags and bag it, but I'm going to leave it at your property for you to dispose of in your trash. There's no reason that they can't do that. Maybe they're older, so you put it in the trash can for them. I want to get away from bagging as much as possible. I just don't like to do it. There are some cases where a, a realtor will call me. They've got a really nice home on the property or in the market, and they, you know, they need it to look really good for showings. I might make exceptions, but understand they're being billed accordingly for that. You can average between $80 and $125 on the hour in my market. So I'm not going to go out and push mow someone's lawn for two hours for 75 bucks. Not happening. So that's why a lot of people won't have it done. But the people that have these half a million dollar homes and one and two, three million dollar homes, they're willing to pay for it because to them, they want to get out from that mortgage. Uh, they want to get that home sold right away. So things to consider. Your earning potential is greater, but there's a lot of more risk. Um, if it's a new customer, that first time, there's always could be you know something sticking out of the ground that you could hit. You could mow over bunnies. For example, um, which I've done a few times over the years, and um, as much as I don't like them in my landscaping at my house, I don't want to kill bunnies. It, it feels horrible to do it, but it, it inevitably happens, or maybe even you know bird eggs or whatever. But consider the bi-weekly mowing and what it could do for you. Um, it could be beneficial. It could be a stepping stone, or maybe you just have a few because on one particular day, uh, uh, you know you've got some free time. You can do bi-weekly mowing. Um, 
But I hope that this has given you something to think about. You ultimately get to decide what works for you. There are other pros and cons that I haven't mentioned here, okay, that you might be thinking of. But I'm just kind of winging this right now. And I just want to get you to think for yourself. Big part of your business success is planning and thinking ahead. So right now in January, when we're not mowing, think about this stuff. You know, think about how you could work. What do you need to make by the end of the year? Then you can break that down to monthly. Then you break that down to weekly. And then, you know, what, what are your goals? I mean, if your cost of living is 50 grand and you're only shooting for 50 grand, you're not really setting yourself up for success. Okay. I mean, if you, your cost of living is 50 grand, why not shoot for a hundred grand or 150,000, you know? Within reason with what you can control. You don't want to create your own hell where you're constantly mowing because you have to. Um, but, you know, you want to be able to enjoy it. And everybody works for different reasons, blah, blah, blah. So give this some thought. If you think it helps, would you give me a favor? Um, go ahead and comment below. If you have something that I didn't mention, comment below. Add, add what your thoughts are. Um, subscribe to the page, guys. Share this video with people. It is something that I am hopeful that will help you and get you to think. And as I always said, and I said a couple times in this video, you own your business. You get to decide what works for you. And somebody might work something out differently than you. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know how to run a business. It doesn't mean that he's any less of a professional or not as good as you. It just means that for a variety of different reasons, he wants to do it differently. But if we share these ideas with each other, then we can help each other grow and evolve. And I want to see all of you succeed. I want to be able to give back. And I hope these videos are helping you. So I'll have another video soon. Thanks for watching.